And uh, I'd like to introduce Max, who's going to tell us about using UWSGI, which I've recently had a very good experience with. So carry on, Max. Yeah. Thank you for coming to this talk. I know it's hard to get up this early, you know, these beer parties till the midnight every day, so yeah, I also had problems today. Okay, um, first the question, who is already using your whiskey? Okay, that's nice. I know that uh, Roberto is here. Roberto, yeah? This is the lead developer of your whiskey. Can we give him some applause? So, um, the talk is called How We Switched Our 800 Plus Projects from Apache to UWSGI. So, who we? Uh, I work for the company called uh, iLove. It's a web agency, Russian web agency. Um, we do websites mainly. We are the part of iLove Group, which consists of three companies iLove, iTarget, and iCom. Um, I love is pronounced just like I love, not a I love, because some people ask me about it. I don't know why. Don't ask me. So we are situated in Russia, in Moscow. We have more than 120 people, and we made more than 800 projects during the last years. I personally work as a team lead for the I love company, and this is one of the largest Russian web agencies. Okay, Hawaii. My name is Max. Um, as I already said, I work and live in Russia, Moscow. I'm also the author of Python Redmond package, which is currently the most popular and feature complete package to access data from Redmine, from Python. And Architect, probably you seen my lightning talk on Monday, which is the successor of Django DB Party package, uh, which provides fully automatic table partitioning for Django, PV, Pony, and SQL Alchemy users. Um, when we just started, we used only PHP for developing our projects with Nginx on the front end and Apache with mode PHP on the back end, which was the best available way to host PHP applications at that time. That was a long time ago. But then after several years, we realized that there were a lot of problems and downsides with PHP itself. So we started to search for another language and choose Python, chose Python for several reasons which are beyond the scope of this talk. Um, and because we already had a already working GINX and Apache environment, so we decided to choose between mod Python, which was, you know, completely dead and abandoned at that time, and mod WSGI, which was also dead, but its corpse was still warm. And yeah, you know, it was more feature rich and had more documentation, so we, chose more whiskey and started to serve our Python applications with more whiskey. Um, we use, used more whiskey in daemon mode because it allows, allowed us to run applications in separate processes and was also the recommended way from more whiskey author himself. Um, actually everything worked, but we had several problems with Apache and more whiskey. Okay, our main problem was that we had projects written in different versions of PHP and Python, and the only way that we found we, you know, we had to, to have five Apache instances, one for each version, listening on different ports, which was really a nightmare to support. Okay, um, another problem was with uh, automatic code reloading during the development. We didn't want, we, we used Django primarily for our projects in Python, so we didn't want to use Django's built-in web server, and we wanted to develop with mode WSGI because we wanted to be sure that uh, everything will work as expected after we deploy on our production service. Yeah. And there are two modes in uh, mode WSGI. Basically, one is called embedded mode, and as far as I know, one needs to restart the whole Apache after the code changes. And there, there is a daemon mode, which we were using, and you have to issue touch command to the WSGI entry point to reload the source. 
Um, also, there was a recipe from Mod Whiskey author, which was hidden, you know, deeply in the docs, and it was the 100 plus something lines of custom-made Python script, which he wrote, and we had to include the script in our projects and live with it. Yeah, I know maybe it's not a big problem, you know, but still, it's, uh, you know, to 2014 year, so there must be a more appropriate way to do that. Um, actually, at the moment, um, an active development of Mode Whiskey started again, and there are several new versions already, and started from 4.1, there is a, is a Django application plugin, which adds a run Mode Whiskey command to the Django, which allows Python, you know, manage Py, run Mode Whiskey, reload on changes common, but that's only for Django, and it's actually the same old 100 plus, plus line script, which is now just became the part of official package of Mod Whiskey. So, nothing new. Um, okay, another problem was that during development, we create a lot of different branches in Git, and we want them to be available, for example, you know, via URL like branch.project.com. And we also wanted each branch to run under separate daemon process because if one branch has some problems um, and these problems can crash the daemon process, the other developers should continue to work. So the solution we came up with is to have a git hook which uh, generates a separate Apache config file for each new branch and then restarts Apache. Um, if a branch gets deleted, then the config file is deleted too and we have to reload Apache again. Now, okay, if we have 20 branches, we have 20 almost absolutely similar config files, yeah, except for the different daemon process name and a few other things. And this is only for one project. So what if we decided to change something in the config file of a project? We have to edit all these 20 config files. You know, this is, this is really painful. Um, perhaps there is another way, and I hope there is another way, but we spent almost a month Googling and we couldn't just find it. So maybe if somebody knows, please tell me. I'm really interested. Um, yeah, another problem. More problems. So when we uh, add a new config file, we have to issue a reload because Apache can't load configuration files dynamically. But there are actually two problems with that. First, um, there is still a little time when this web server don't respond to requests. This time can be from milliseconds to seconds, depending on various factors. Um, and second, if there is an error in your configuration file, the whole server will crash. Yes, there is a config test comment which can check the syntax of the file, but this is only the syntax, so if it's not the syntax error, but some logical error, then the whole server will crash. So this is not good. And um, yeah, lastly, some small problems, you know, maybe subjective, but still. Um, first one, Apache configuration files are ugly. I know a lot of people, and me including, who thinks that. Um, you know, if you look at the Apache configuration files, you need some time to understand what's going on in there, especially if uh, there are some complex ones. So, um, Apache is hard to configure properly. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, you have to be really Apache expert to configure it in a way that it could compete with other web servers in areas like, you know, memory management, CPU utilization, so not every sysadmin knows how to do that. Um, yeah, Apache is old, you know, even my grandma was using it in the old days. Yeah, the 2.2 version was released in the 2005. Um, yes, there is a 2. Yeah, it's, it's still developed, this branch, but actually they mostly fix bugs. And 2.4 version was released in uh, 2012. And yes, it's fixed a lot of problems and limitations. For example, you know, memory management became much better. They finally added an ability to declare config file variables. 
So for config files became a bit cleaner too. And um, yeah, Mod Whisky seemed to be abandoned at the time when we was looking for a solution, but it's actually developed again, so this is not really a problem now. And all these problems uh, made us to start looking for a solution, and we quickly found the solution. It's called QWSGI. So um, QWSGI, it's a modern project. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it started somewhere between uh, 2009 or to start 2010. Um, it has a really fast development cycle, and new features are constantly adding. It supports a lot of languages, including Python and C Python, PyPy, and Jython is support is coming. It supports PHP, Lua, Perl, Ruby, Erlang, Go, Java has support for V8 engine and Mono for running ASP.NET applications and more. So it's really cool. Um, it uh, works, you know, on all Linuxes, Windowses, PSDs, and other OSs like macOS, Solaris, and so on. Um, Nginx supports uwsgi protocol directly and uwsgi is the best performing protocol of uwsgi um, it also has a ton more features we'll discuss some of the most interesting later um, and just a brief introduction how we can install it it's really easy so you just go download this latest version of uwsgi um, the vast majority of UWSGI features are available as plugins, which is also really cool. And if you want to have the maximum amount of flexibility and use only the minimal amount of resources, so just create a modular build, which is the recommended approach. Um, I'll show how to do it from the source because OS package repositories may not always have the latest version or may not have the available plugins. So we just download this UWSGI thing. Um, if you want to change install location, you know, you can add the two following um, directives to the buildconf slash core.ini file. And then you create these directories, of course. Now we have to build the core. It's really easy. Um, Core already consists of several packages that are most likely will be needed by everyone, but if you are thinking that you are not everyone, you can also customize what exactly the core will consist of and recompile it. And then we needed to build our plugins. Yeah, two plugins for Python 2.7 and 3.3. Um, and let's build two plugins for PHP. I know we hate PHP, but still. Um, okay, we, we just completed the install process. That's actually, it's very simple. Now let's uh, see how we can solve problems that we had with Apache and more Whisky with the help of UWSGI. First, yeah, multi-version plugins. This is really cool. This was the biggest problem for us. And this just works in UWSGI. You compile as many plugins as you need and it just works. Um, yeah, remember that 100 plus lines Python script which was used in ModWisGi to monitor code changes and real true load daemon process. UWSGI has just a you know, simple option. You just uh, specify how many seconds you, you want to the, you know, this UWSGI to scan for your code changes and it reloads everything automatically. Um, there is also a touch reload option if you need it. So no more custom wait home scripts, you know, which you have to search and include in your projects. Finally. Um, we also had a problem with mode whisky's whisky daemon process directive. Name can't be dynamic and we needed to separate daemon process for each git branch. So we had to generate absolutely similar config files. Um, UWSGI has a thing called emperor mode, which was the solution to this problem. Uh, basically, it's a special instance of UWSGI that will monitor special events and will spawn stop reload instances known as vessels uh, on demand. Um, 
By default, the emperor will scan specific directories for supported configuration files, but it is extensible using Imperial Monitor plugins. That means that you can store configuration in Postgres, you know, Mongo, publish it via MQP, ZeroMQ, and so on. There are many options. Um, let's see an example for the directory monitor plugin. We start a Uwisgi Emperor instance and ask it to monitor yeah, the following directory pattern. Now, if we add a new file to this directory, the Emperor will automatically spawn a new vessel. And if we modify the file, the Emperor will restart a vessel. And if we delete the file, the vessel will be killed. And all of this will happen absolutely automatically. There is no need to issue some, you know, restart comments, reload, and so on. Um, now, what if we have an error in our vessel configuration file? Actually, nothing <coughs> bad will happen um, to the other vessels. The emperor will just say that this vessel is cursed, you know, and won't spawn a new instance of it. So, if the emperor dies himself, then obvious that his, ulti his vessels are died with him. Um, so, how will this actually help us with this Apache problem with dynamic whiskey daemon process problem, yeah? Um, should we also create the same insane amount of configuration files per project, one for each branch? Um, yes and no. We'll use template config files and create symlinks. This is uh, an example of template config file. Mm, at first, we define our own variable called project view and set here the path to our project. Then we define that we'll be using Python 2.7. This is our plugin. And our other Python project related stuff, which should be nothing new to anyone who knows how Python apps work. The interesting thing here is the person 10 magic variable, which is the config uh, file name without extension. By the way, I don't know about you, but for me, this syntax is much, much cleaner, you know, compared to Apache configuration files. And also, as a bonus, my brain doesn't hurt after I work with these configuration files. So, it's nice. Um, that means that from now on, instead of generating a separate config file for each Git branch, uh, we just create a symlink to the project's template file. Um, and yes, there will be, this, this will give us 20 symlinks for 20 git branches still, but the big win over Apache is that if we need to change something, we change it in one place in the template config file instead of changing every you know config file generated for Apache. Um, and also because we are using the daemon mode, which is monitoring our directories for config files, when a new symlink is created, a new vessel is spawned automatically. And if we delete this symlink, then the vessel is killed also automatically. No need for any restart comments and so on. And also, starting from 1.9.1, you can now tell the emperor to spawn a vessel only after the first request has been made. Combined with idle and die on idle options, this uh, allows us to have uh, really truly on demand applications, which is also cool. Uh, okay, let's briefly talk about some of the UBSGI's interesting features. So we can implement auto scaling with the UBSGI uh, using the Broodlord, Zerk, and Emperor modes with idle and die on idle options. So it's a combination of features, you know. Um, the idea is that uh, when site is the site load is uh, heavy and your vessels just can't handle it. Um, they can ask Emperor to enter Broodlord mode and give them some help, Zerks, so they could win the battle, you know, and serve all the requests. And after the load is normal again, the Broodlord kills all the Zerks and everything is fine again. Um, as of 1.3, there is an alarm subsystem. It allows the developer or sysadmin to announce some special conditions via the various channels. For example, you may want to get notified via Jabber when a string terrible alarm appeared in log files, for example, or something. There are a lot of also options to configure these alarm subsystems. Subsystem. Um, there is also a nice feature for aliasing Python modules. Um, 
you know that having multiple versions of Python package or model is very common. And the one way is manipulating Python path or using virtual ENVs. But for example, UISGI gives us another option called aliasing system. Let's say we have imports of foo and bar modules in a lot of places in our code and we want to make some modifications to it but keep our original foo and bar modules intact for whatever reason. We can create experimental foo and experimental bar modules and make any changes in them and alias them and when you know you make an import foo and bar instead of importing the original files experimental foo and experimental bar modules will be imported. Um, there are a lot of cool features, a lot. We need a lot of time to, you know, talk about all of them. But briefly, there is also a built-in cron tab. Yeah. Um, there is load balancer, clustering subsystem, offload subsystem, which allows you to automatically delegate some heavy tasks to separate threads. Um, it also has a lot of different plugins for different tasks and it integrates with almost all web, well-known web servers like you know Nginx, Apache, Cherokee, Lite, HTTPD, Mongo2 and so on and so on. It has also Django admin integration um, plugin which shows the status of UISGI and allows to restart uh, or clear its cache and there is more functionality in development. Also, it has a rich configuration system. It supports configuration files in any XML, YAML, or JSON. And so you can choose well, what you like, what is better for your brain. It has more than 30 magic variables for all sorts of things, you know, like environmental variables, placeholders, and, and so on. You can even do simple math in placeholders. You can read contents of other files from your config files. You can write for cycles and if statements in config files. You can declare your own variables in your Python scripts and use them in your whiskey and much more. So it's cool. Okay, finally, how to switch? Your whiskey is cool, yeah, but how? Um, you know, there is no easy way, unfortunately. There is no some magic tool that will translate all your Apache config files to your whiskey ones. Um, how we did that with our you know, more than 800 projects. Well, the, we divided our projects into several groups that have equal or almost equal uh, Apache config files. Then we wrote a script that generates similar analogs for your whiskey for each group. Um, that took us approximately two days and allowed to switch all our projects to your whiskey on our dev service. Then we started to run our functional tests and see if all of them passed, then whenever there was a problem, uh, we just looked at it and, you know, we, th this way we tuned the config files for your whiskey. And we were, when we were sure that everything works on our dev service, we made a switch to your whiskey on our production service. So that's how we did that. Um, again, everything by hand, unfortunately. Um, conclusion. Yeah, in the conclusion, I want to say that Apache is actually not bad. It's a very good and stable web server, which is used by a lot of people. Um, if it's suitable, and it, it is suitable for a lot of situations, and you can happily use it if it works for you. Do not blindly trust people that say Apache sucks. Go try this or that new super cool web server. Um, just tune on your brain and think, do you really have any problems with your Apache? And if no, then live happily with it and don't listen to anyone. Um, in this talk I explained why we switched, so we didn't have any problems with Apache performance, but we had problems with its features. So we could do everything we wanted with Apache, but we wasn't happy with how we could do that. And what I'm trying to say is that you should choose a web server by features and not by benchmark, though um, UISGI has a much better memory management than Apache, so you'll probably win something in performance. Um, and also it's pointless to benchmark a web server because usually they all perform approximately the same if they configure it properly and in 99 cases this is an application that is written incorrectly and has performance problems and not a web server 
you know, which just serves an application to the world. So, thank you. Thank you, Max. Uh, we've got time for a couple of questions. Anyone? Yeah. Do we have a microphone? Uh, okay, come here. Um, compared to you, don't with the patchy, but one is, I guess, an application server, and the other one is a web server, so isn't, wouldn't it be better to compare UW to with the more yeah. And maybe it can use a patchy as a reverse proxy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, so. The question is uh, if it's maybe was better to compare you whiskey with mode whiskey, you know, and not you whiskey with the whole Apache thing, yeah? Or uh, maybe in addition, do you run anything in front of uh, you? Yes, yes, of course. In front of, so we, we had Nginx in front of and Apache with mode whiskey on the back end, and now we have again Nginx on the front end and you whiskey on the back end. Um, Speaking about the comparison, if it's a fair comparison, I think yes it is, because mode whiskey is uh, just, you know, a thing to serve Python applications, but it, it just won't work without Apache itself, so of course. Um, and, well, I, I don't know, I think the comparison is fair, yeah. So. Yes, you can, you can use uh, Apache as a reverse proxy, yes you can, but it, you know, the problem was that it's not very comfortable to work with Apache. You have to search for some workarounds always to make everything work. We didn't like it. One more question. Uh, <coughs> just to, uh, to go with the flow, that the, um, one could add that the USD could be compared to Junicorn, for example. And uh, in this case, you could have a setup with uh, Nginx, and behind you could have Junicorn <coughs> and USB equally. So Apache is basically you can replace it with Nginx, or, and then behind it, you have uh, an application server which could be Junicorn to be USB. You have this setup. Yeah, but, but uh, Junicorn, it, it can't serve you know, any other type of applications. Yeah, on, only Python. Only Python. Yeah, so it's uh, maybe. You know, you can compare Apache with UWSGI because it's, you know, they, they are full web service. They, su they support a lot of languages, a lot of technologies. And so, yeah, this is why I did the, this comparison answer. I think we'll stop now. I'm sure you can answer any questions in the corridor track. Okay, thank you, Max. Uh thank you, Roberto. Stand up, please. No?